Okay guys, we're gonna be real with you today. There's a few folks in the comment section, well-meaning folks, who will tell you all that we're leading you astray, that teardrop camping and small trailer camping is not all glitz and glam, but it's actually hard work. Well, as you all know, we have never lied to you on this channel. We've always been open. And so today we're gonna to be open and honest with you too. They're right. Teardrop camping is work. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Playing With Sticks. This is a channel devoted to small camper trailers, helping you get outdoors in a more meaningful, simple, and enjoyable way. If that sounds like you, subscribe below. In this episode, we are going to walk you through the work involved with setting up a teardrop trailer campsite and letting you decide for yourself if you have what it takes to do this hard work. But maybe, just maybe, those naysayers who are against all this work and are trying to convince you to buy that Class A RV, maybe they could benefit from a little bit of that work they are so against as well. Today, I'm gonna to propose that work at the campsite actually enhances the overall camping experience. And I'm gonna to have to tell you it through story, so let's go. 12 to 13 years ago, before my wife and I had any children, we struggled to find common ground in quite a few areas, especially camping. And I think camping, I don't think it was for May like at all. I know she liked the small comforts, the closeness that we had together, but I think her favorite part of camping was the time when we headed home. So I loved putting up the tents. I loved making that fire, but all the work the next morning and putting away all the wet stuff wasn't really worth all the joy I had the night before. If I was gonna put that much energy into something, I was gonna put it into something I actually loved like backpacking or skiing or fishing. So you can probably see we had a bit of an issue. We both kind of had a love-hate relationship for camping and we needed to find something that was a better fit for us. So as you can tell, we had a bit of an issue. Yes, we both love the comfort and the closeness we are finding in the outdoors, but we were only able to do it two to three times a year due to the love-hate relationship we had with the camping experience. And then the outdoor pursuits that I loved were too intense for May, which meant we needed to find another way to get outdoors together in a way we both enjoyed. All right guys, we're running out of light here and the noise around is just awful. So we're gonna pick up tomorrow at our next campsite. This is the first day Alaska is allowed to go out camping. So everybody is out here. We had to fight for this boondocking site. Typically we are at our favorite sites. Rarely we have to pick a second rate boondocking site. I would call this one third rate, barely above a Walmart parking lot. So we'll see you tomorrow. So I probably should have mentioned this one first. The top priority for me was to make sure May actually enjoyed what we were doing. I didn't want her to be out here with me just because she loved me, just because she wanted to be with me. I wanted her out here pursuing something that made her heart skip a beat. What's up? Just kidding. <laughs> We are about to go berry picking. I wanted her to find something that was uniquely her, but also uniquely us. I should also mention, at this time, both May and I were both working full-time jobs and doing side hustles on the side. And so we didn't want any extra stress. We didn't want any extra time put into another hobby. So we needed something that was simple and organized. Well, this is an easy order, right? Let's just get an RV or a fifth wheel. May will have that comfort of the indoors. I will have that nice organized space that gets me outside to the destinations I want. And we will get in that RV and just ride into the sunset. But we did wanna get out there first and try an RV or try a fifth wheel before totally plunging into this investment. So we decided to rent an RV. And you guys thought we were irresponsible. Although we thought we knew RVs pretty well before the trip, what we didn't realize is what RV life was like once you actually get to the campsite. So basically, let me paint a little picture for you. You get in your RV, you pull up to your campsite, you back it in, maybe put in a couple leveling blocks, pull out the awning. If you have a bump out, bump it out, pull out the chairs, and then you sit. 
Now that sounds pretty good, right? Nature, beauty, sitting in the chairs, more nature, beauty, repeat. What am I going to do next? I am bored and I don't get bored very often. May is loving it and I'm just, I'm freaking out. I'm starting to twiddle my thumbs. I'm just looking for something to do. So I start looking around the campsite and I think, you know, I could build a fire. Okay, let's go build a fire. After I finish the fire, let's, let's put up a hammock. I put up a hammock. Let's put out an awning. Oh, the camper actually has an awning. Things are just going through my head and I'm starting to have some fun. I go out, I dig a little latrine, even though we didn't need it. I'm just moving through things at the campsite and I come back and I sit down and all of a sudden I am feeling good. Looking around and seeing that both of us are happy, I just slow down and I think, what just happened? And I realized it was so simple. So for us both to have the experience we wanted, May needed the ability to set up camp with me and then just relax for a day or two in the campground before even breaking out the hiking boots or going on any adventures. And me? I needed something to keep me busy and something to do at the campsite so I felt engaged in the pursuit of outdoors. A few months pass and May and I are sitting in the waiting room of a medical clinic and she passes me one of those sunset magazines and she says, check out this lifestyle these people are living. And it was a picture of a little teardrop trailer sitting on the west coast, right on the edge of the ocean. And I thought in my head, how are we going to make this happen? Within that year, we become the proud owners of our first teardrop trailer. And we waste no time decking out our outdoor living space with side entry tents and awnings and carpets and bathrooms and outdoor cooking areas. We got everything. So we quickly became those people that the large RVers look at and say, let's place a bet and see how long it takes them to get a real camper. And honestly, I get it. It looks ridiculous from the outside. Why would anybody purchase a trailer that takes 20 minutes to set it up from the outside? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. You might as well just go camping. And this is where it's really hard to explain to people. Unlike an RV where you come to see nature but spend the majority of your time living in an indoor space separated from nature, with a teardrop trailer you're only separated from nature with a thin layer of mosquito netting between you and the outdoors. And most often your usable living space actually exceeds the living space of those large RVs you see coming down the road burning gas at a rate that you don't even want to think about. And as for all those naysayers in the comment section who talk about how hard it is to teardrop in a rainstorm or a week of rain, like here in Alaska where we have rain all the time, I can tell you guys from experience, I've experienced cabin fever sitting in an RV, but I have never experienced cabin fever in the outdoors. So if you haven't picked up yet on the work involved with teardrop living, let me show you really quick. I'm going to show you the order of we do things and just quickly explain the work involved to see if it's something you do want to get into or it's something that's like, that's way too much work for me. So when you arrive at camp, the first thing you do is you find that perfect campsite. Now with an RV, you don't have many options. You pull in one way, you pull out one way. With a teardrop, you pull in and you can unhitch it and move it wherever you want to be. Should we set it up? Let's set it up. Want a better view of the mountains? Crank it this way. Want to be turned a little bit so you have more privacy for your neighbor? No problem. Want to keep it on pavement? Great. Want to take it down the trail and drag it? We've done that many times too. And I will warn you, careful, that is where we have put the dings in our teardrop, dragging it down little trails. But you can take that teardrop and make it a home alongside a beautiful vista that you could never do in an RV. So next, we level the trailer. Now some RVs, with just a push of the button, it can self-level. With a teardrop trailer, you're gonna have to put a rock under there, some wood, or some self-leveling blocks. The first thing we do is put up the side entry tent. This allows the kids and the wife to get out of the rain, the sun, the wind, and if it's a colder day, we throw out the portable buddy heater. This one's gonna sound a little ridiculous to you guys, but many people use a second side entry tent. Now this is either to get out of their other door of their teardrop, 
or most people use it a tent over their galley. This allows them to cook in the rain. Another option, which is what we do, we take an instant clam pop-up tent and throw that over the picnic tables that are at campsites, you know, that you pay for. Uh, campsites that have picnic tables. We don't use a whole lot of them, but when we have it, it's really nice to have a covered eating area for your trip. So now we have all the fun tents up. The next tents are the duty tents. So for years, we took the little blue pop-up tent and used that as our shower and our bathroom. Now we currently use a more robust tent during the day for our shower and bathroom. And then at night, we use the little blue tent inside our side entry tent. And what that allows us to do is go to the bathroom in the night without ever having to walk through the rain to get to a toilet. So this is a modification I want to do in the near future and that's get rid of that blue tent inside the side entry at night because it takes up a lot of space and I just want to make a way to hook basically a sheet inside the clam tent that keeps it private so you can go to the bathroom but again you can get into it at night no rain getting on you. Next, we throw up the cooking area, put up a table for food prep and grilling, and then another little small table for holding our water jug. So at this point in the process is when I usually just stop and rest and kind of take in this little campsite I built and enjoy the time with my family. Hi. A few hours later, after I start getting a bit antsy again, that's when we start putting up the fun accessories like lanterns, fire pits, um, solar panels, just interesting little things to keep me a little busy out there. So what I'm learning is that simplicity doesn't always mean everything is taken care of for you. Everything is instant and easy. Some of the most simplistic pursuits of life that gives us the most joy are work in itself. Drawing water from a well, hiking to the top of a mountain, planting your own garden. Hey, who said you can eat the cabbage? Who said you can eat the cabbage? Sometimes I think work is part of simplicity in the pursuit of happiness. Okay, let's try it. And I also think maybe we often try too hard to create an outdoor experience for ourselves that is too comfortable. And this is coming from a guy who just got a new 12 volt fridge and brings his solar panels out with him everywhere he goes. It's just thoughts I have, guys. All right, if you guys enjoyed this video, there's another one here about our outdoor living space and what we bring with us. And then a playlist here of tips and tricks for more simple and a gratifying outdoor camping experience. If you're new to the channel, subscribe below. And I hope all of you get out here soon. It is beautiful. Uh, we're praying for you all that you can get out and enjoy nature like we are up here in Alaska. See you guys all soon.